Good morning, everyone. Welcome. My name is Menachem Creditor. It's my honor to serve as scholar in residence and rabbi for UJA Federation of New York. We bring you Torah and music, blessing and community every weekday. We've been doing so since March 18th, 2020. Today it is Wednesday, January 24th, 2024. It is an extraordinary thing that we have done creating this community of Torah and friendship, togetherness and learning and support for a very, very long time, 977 consecutive weekday broadcasts. It's beautiful to see you here. Ron and Cheryl, Justin, Valerie, Hineni, I am here too. Anna and Sherry, Boker Tov, Barbara and Judy, Dale and Marilyn, good morning, friends. I hope that all of you are safe and well. Arlene and Chana, Marilyn and Sharon, Carl, Haley, Lydia, Fabrice, April and Linda, good to see all of you. Barry and Joseph, Blair and Natalie, hi. All right, friends, let's take a second. Let's take a breath. Let's sing a blessing, learn some Torah. Here we go. Deborah, today is three years since your father died. May his memory be for a blessing. We bring him into this Torah. His memory and your comfort are totally, totally where our hearts are too. being so touched that my son Moshe joins us on this broadcast. It is so good to see you here, my love. He's on Instagram, so if you're on Facebook, he won't know if you say hello, but I will convey all of that love to my beautiful boy. Good to see you. Have a great day. <laughs> he wrote, that's my rabbi. That's my boy. All right, let's begin with, um, look, with where we are. This is broadcast 977, but that's not really where we are. It's beautiful, it's amazing, it's miraculous. Very proud, very proud of the role that we each play, that I get to play in bringing our community together in this way. I'm very grateful to you, J.A., for having sparked this idea, to my dear friend, Mark Meaden, for having the idea in the first place almost four years ago to bring together a community that could hold each other when we couldn't be physically near each other. And we have grown and grown and grown ever since that original idea. Now, I share all of that with you because the gratitude, the strength that this offers is actually something that holds us when times are tough. And many times since we began this community, times have been tough. So what is really important for us to do is what we have done. Look at the Torah for guidance and acknowledge where we are. Today is day 110 uh, since October 7th. That's where we are. That's where the Jewish world is. That's where the whole world should be paying attention. And the only prayer on our lips, in our hearts, 
is bring them home now. I've worn this necklace for almost 110 days. I got this um, specific dog tag the week after October 7th when UJA brought a group of interdenominational rabbis from New York. Um, and so this is where we are. I'm just going to say it again because we're going to talk to her in a second, but this is where we are. Bring them home now. And we are accompanied, or we are accompanying, tens of thousands of women in Israel who flooded the highways and streets just today to demand that the government focus more on bringing the hostages home. And while you and I, from the distance, think that we understand because we are tapped into the emotions of our family, and we are, we are, <clears throat> Being on the ground in Israel right now is a radically different experience. I hope that you will take every opportunity that comes your way and you will seek out those that aren't presented proactively to go be on the ground with our sisters and brothers in Israel. When you order coffee, it will not be a casual transaction. It will be a meaningful connection between two people. And our sisters and brothers need us. They are in shock when we show up grateful to know that we love them. And this is an important thing for us to do. So Sharon, thank you for going in a week. Friends, if you have any option going to Israel right now, go. It's a mitzvah, especially right now. Let's talk some Torah. Let's talk some Torah. So we're in Parsha B'Shalach. Song of the Sea happens this week. And <clears throat> tonight is Tu Bishvat. Tonight is a new year for nature. And it's hard to have all of this at the same time. It really is. So let's do our best to find within this Parsha an indication of a way forward. We started reading the Torah October 7th. It was Simchas Torah. It all began at the same time. And this year's processing of Torah is a radically different processing of Torah. The prism, the emotional experience, friends, of all of us, of all of us, um, has been a very different one. And it is, it is a privilege to have a community that can hold all this. A community that reaches as far, I'm on Instagram, with a new friend, with Avaran Loko, who sends Shalom greetings from Uganda. We are a community that can reach everywhere, a community that is made up of people from everywhere. And that is the way Torah will hold us in these moments too. It's good to have you here, my friend, my brother. Welcome. Here's a little bit from this Parsha. If you're looking for it, it's Exodus 15, verses 23 to 25. I'll read the Hebrew first, then the English. Now, in this three-verse section, there is so much. Also, it's a tongue twister if you listen to it closely. The first verse has the word mar, one, two, three, four, five times. And the third verse I read, that's 1525 in Shemot. Listen to this last. Sham sam lo chok mishpat v'sam nisahu. It's meant to make you pause. It's meant to make you slow down. And if not to notice this meaning, then why would it be like that? Here's the translation. They came to Mara, capital M, name of a place. But they could not drink the water of Mara because it was bitter, Mar. That's why it was named Mara, right? It explains the name of the place, but it also tells us something that is happening right after the Song of the Sea, water and water. And of course, for those who remember the role of Miriam, when she dies, suddenly we don't have fresh water. Remember, mar, yam, bitter water. 
Her name is about what we do with bitterness. What do we do? We go right through it like we cross the Yam, cross the sea. But this is what happens. The water was bitter, they couldn't drink, and the people grumbled, they complained against Moshe, saying, Manishte, what can we drink? So he cried out to God because he didn't have an answer. And God showed him an eitz. It's alternatively translated as wood or something else. We'll get to that in a second. He threw it into the water, and the water became sweet. And there God made for them a fixed rule. There they were put to the test. When the world tests you, how do you respond? What response could there be? Now, I want to share a really interesting series of Midrashim. Um, these are all available on Safari. I also sometimes refer to My Jewish Learning if you're looking for another good resource. So listen to some of these interpretations. This is all from Midrash Tanchuma, an ancient, ancient Midrash. There are several opinions as to what the wood was. Rabbi Yeshua, who was a charcoal maker, so he knew from wood, he said that it was a willow, an arava. Rabbi Natan said it was a type of bitter ivy. Rabbi Elazar Hamodai said it was an olive tree. Rabbi Yeshua ben Korcha said it was a thistle bush. But all of them agreed that it was bitter. We can disagree about the way that the bitterness feels and the response that it calls for, but even and especially in a moment like the one we share, especially in this moment that we share, we can agree that the world is presenting bitter challenge. How do we respond to it? Remember, tonight is Tu Bishvat. Can we learn from the wealth of tradition, the reverence for the created world, so that we can respond with something that has been bestowed upon us, placed in our hands. When the bitterness threatened the ability of the Israelites to drink anything, wood, a tree, was part of the response. The natural world can bring us back into a state of reverie and gratitude. I wake up on this morning, day 110 of the war, and if I can be courageous enough to open my eyes and notice that there's a sky above me and trees outside my window and snow that's almost all melted but still somehow present, that there's air that I'm breathing. I can experience even and especially in this moment what Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel called radical amazement and that will get me through. Waking up with gratitude for a world that I could not have done enough to be worthy of just am gifted with it. That helps. That wood that Moses threw into the bitter waters, it was just part of the earth, and it solved a problem of how to feel nourished in harsh conditions. So what I want to share with you also is that there is actually this beautiful opinion in the Zohar in the sort of the canon of Jewish mystical thinking, which is when, when it's, the verse says, God showed Moshe the eights. You might know the word eights, which literally means tree. When we put the Torah, uh, Torah away, we say, chaim ba. It is a tree of life to those who hold close to it, who hold it tight. It is possible that the tree of life is the way that we make it through the bitter. And so, friends, here we are in a community that has met uh, 977 times. And Torah has been a sweetening agent in our lives, hasn't it? We've held on to each other, and we have held close to Torah throughout this time. Torah itself is wrapped, at least in Ashkenazi tradition, on something called the Eitz Chaim, the staves, the wooden holders for the parchment. Moshe throws Eitz into the bitter, and it becomes nourishing once more. And so, friends, 
here's what I'd love to invite us to feel on this convergence of things. Day 110, since we've seen our children, our grandparents, our neighbors. Bitter. Bitter. No other way to go through life than to go through it. It's bitter right now. So we call out for nourishment because we feel, our souls feel so parched. And in response, we have Torah. In response, we have action. In response, we have resilience, radical amazement to make us strong enough to fight for life, to bring them home. It's Tu Bishvat tonight. When you venture out today, imagine if you touch a tree or just touch the ground, if you're lucky enough to be in a place with no pavement, just touch the ground and send your heart through the ground, shared across the entire earth. Because that ground is also where our family is one planet, one connective thing, one organically connected environment. The air here is the air there. If we can tap into the earth just by touching it, if the weather were warmer, I would say take off your shoes and socks and just touch the earth with your feet, grateful for its existence concerned for its endurance, committed to taking care of our degraded environment. And you send your soul's comfort and strength all the way to those still being held in captivity, all the way to where we can't even see, but we can feel. Maybe this radical amazement has many, many manifestations. Maybe radical amazement gives us the chance to stand in wonder of the universe that connects us all. The tree is nourished by the ground. We came from the ground. We will return to the ground. That ground is touched by our lives, by our ancestors. Maybe that's connective tissue so that we can send strength to our loved ones who we miss so much. So on this Tu Bishvat tonight and tomorrow, on this day when we read from the Torah of the water that felt so bitter but could be sweetened by connecting again to nature and to Torah, maybe we can be part of sending a message of strength and hope by reconnecting with the earth. May we be so blessed. May we be so blessed. May we feel strong because we are of and for this earth. May our renewed strength be a source of nourishment for those truly experiencing bitterness. May they come home now. Now. Okay, friends, let's take a breath. We'll sing Hatikva. We'll connect with our world. And we know what we're praying for. Kolon baleva penima nefesh yehudi homia ufate mizrach Kadima Ain Letzion Sophia O Loanda Tikvatenu Ha Tikvabat Shnot Alpain Liot Amhovshi Be'artzenu Eretz Zion Yerushalayim Liot Amchovshi 
Deartsenu Eretz Zion Virushalayim Bring them home. Am Yisrael Chai. See you tomorrow, friends. See you tomorrow.